Are you ready to dive into West Indies top 10 ODI batsmen of all time? <laughs> Who are we going with at number 10? Marlon Samuels from Jamaica, right handed batsman, 207 ODIs, 196 innings, 26 not out, 5,606 runs, best of 133 not out, average of 32.97, 10 centuries, 30 half centuries. He played one of his best innings in India in 2002 when the series was leveled a three match all. Samuels made 108 magnificent runs from 75 balls to win West Indies and match in the series. So Samuels was the type of player always seems to produce when the chips are down or when the West Indies needed him most. He would always step up to the plate. That was one of the assets and great things about Marlon Samuels. And he was a clutch player, as we call clutch players here in American cricket who come through at the time when team needs them the most. They're invaluable to the team as he was to West Indies ODI team. His calm and composed presence at the crease made him a crucial player in the middle order and he provided solidity with his off spin as well, bringing balance to the team. West Indies cricket at that time needed somebody like him. He was like a Carl Hooper type of a mold. Came to the party when it mattered, won that T20 final showcasing again his talent for rising to the occasion so number 10 marlon samuels let's move on to number nine who are we going with on number nine yeah number nine is shignarine chandra paul 268 odis 251 innings 40 not out 8778 runs best of 150 average of 41.6 zeros 11 century 59 half centuries he had a controversial technique but he understood his game and always flexible he batted up and down the order with West Indies team it opened from time to time and then he was back in the middle order as well but always produced the goods for West Indies remember a couple match winning knocks against Sri Lanka Shander Paul a very reliable batsman understood his games picked up the singles rotate the strike always was able to up the ante when it was necessary Shander Paul one of our greatest West Indies ODI batsman. Paul was one of great fighters. He was known for, as you said, Mark, his unorthodox stance and incredible consistency, however, you know, because he was always up for the fight. A lot of the middle order batters that we see have this quality of just standing guard and putting up a fight. You know, Javed Miandad comes to mind from Pakistan. One of the greats of the game he was, and so was Paul. The middle order came in, put up a fight. One of the hardest guys to get out and his ability to, again, you know, anchor bat for long periods made him a key figure for over two decades in that middle order. So one of the greats of the game, Shiv Chandrapal. We should try and get him on the Reverse Coup podcast. So viewers, hashtag Shiv Chandrapal on Reverse Coup podcast. Let's see if we can get the message out to the world and maybe we get Chandrapal reaching out and, you know, we'll do a podcast episode with him. Shiv Chandrapal, number nine. Who are we going with on number eight? Number eight is Phil Simmons from Trinidad and Tobago. Hard hitting right-handed open batsman. Basically, sea ball hit ball kind of a batsman. West Indies never really saw the best of Phil Simmons. After he was hit, in the head in 1988 on the tour of England by Sid Lawrence. We never really saw the best of Phil Simmons, but pre that hit, Phil Simmons was one of the most aggressive batsmen in the Caribbean, all forms of cricket. So he played 143 ODIs for West Indies, 11 not out, best of 122, average of 28.93, five centuries, 18 half centuries, but he made some valuable contributions to West Indies at the top of the order. We always go over the top during the power play and always batted aggressively Phil Simmons, an underrated batsman, but very effective at the top of the order for West Indies, his illustrious career. And he could also ball some media pace and known for his adaptability, doing what, what he needed to do for the team and always open-minded type of a player. And he also, you know, played some several match-winning knocks. One of the greats of the game for West Indies cricket, one of the great coaches as well in recent times. He's coached a lot of different international level teams as well as franchise league teams as well. He's a highly paid coach and a well-respected individual. Bill Simmons, number eight for us. So before we move on, one thing, guys, this this video is sponsored by, again, MSDA's Caribbean Man Cricket Bat. Yeah, this is a Caribbean Man, my favorite. Very light, thick, light bat, 2 pounds, 7 ounces. Good pickup, you know, well balanced. All right, I also have the Bowler Killer. This is the first edition Bowler Killer. I have several versions of Bowler Killer. Very light. This is two-tone bat. This one has about 13 grains. I'm not sure if you could see it. All right, but it's a very good bat. Well balanced bat. Feels really good in my hands. Very reasonable price, guys. Most of these bats 
uh, the maximum 350 or 300. All depends. But I have a deal. I don't turn away anybody. Anybody's interested, I always have a deal for it. Thanks very much. Absolutely. And where, where can they reach out to you, Mark? They can just message you on fa- on your Facebook page, right? Well, it's Facebook. They could message me on WhatsApp. Only serious people. 516-587-3290. That's my WhatsApp. Until my website is launched. All right, man. Let's move on. Number seven now. Number seven is a Jamaican left-handed batsman, Wavell Hines. Underrated, 119 ODIs, 111 innings, 10 not outs, 2,880 runs, best of 127, five centuries, 14 half centuries. Wavell Hines was no-nonsense kind of batsman at the top of the order, or when he batted in the middle order for West Indies. Very good down the ground, plays straight, open with Chris Gale, farm of good partnership with Chris Gale, on and off, but he was always in and out of West Indies team. Team. Anytime he played for West Indies, he always made a valuable contribution. I rate him very highly. I wish he really had got more opportunities for West Indies, but that's how life is sometimes as a cricketer. So Wavell Hines, one of my top West Indies ODI batsmen. His cricket career spanned from the late 1990s to the mid-2000s, during the during which he represented you know, the Test One Day Internationals and played a couple of T20 Internationals as well. Hines was known for his aggressive style of play. He was capable of playing long innings and had the versatility to adapt to different formats of the game. You know, in domestic cricket, apart from his international career, Hines played extensively in domestic cricket representing Jamaica, the West Indies domestic circuit. He also played county cricket in England for teams like Derbyshire and Warwickshire. Let's move on to number six. Who are we going with on number six, man? Yes, number six is Richie Richardson from Antigua, West Indies captain. 224 ODIs, 217 innings, 13 not out 6248 runs best of 122 average of 33.41 five centuries of 44 half centuries so richie richardson was very aggressive for a player who played 224 matches five centuries is a bit low but he was an impact player he was always aggressive at the top of the order or batting at number three he was very flexible but many different positions and played many different roles for west indies but as a captain too he led from the front so that's one of one of the great assets of richie Richardson as a captain as well. He did perform at the bat, uh, good leadership qualities as well, but he was always trying to move the game forward, aggressive, wasn't afraid to go over the top and wasn't afraid to play good, crucial roles, attack with good defense. So that's why I have Richie Richardson as one of my great West Indies batsmen, of o- ODI cricket batsmen. Yeah, man, Richard Richardson took over the mantle of West Indies captaincy from Rim Richards and was known for his stylish batting and wide-brimmed maroon hat. He was consistent performer for the West Indies, known for his aggressive stroke play and his uh, top-notch leadership quality kept the West Indies cricket at bay at a time of transition before we move on I want to give guys a quiz question in our last video I told you guys that I will be bringing more quiz questions to you guys during our videos today's quiz question for this video is who was the first test captain lead his country 50 tests that's the question we're going to answer it right at the end of the video before we announce number one so and number one again you guys will have to take a guess and we'll announce it right at the end. All right, Mark, let's move on to number five, man. Who are we going with on number five? Number five is Carl Hooper. I call him the beauty queen of batting. 227 matches for West Indies, former West Indies captain as well. 206 innings, 43 not out, 5,761 runs, best of 113, average of 35.35, seven ODI centuries and 29 ODI half centuries. Carl Hooper, elegant batsman, you know, easy in the eye. Had all the shots, beautiful to watch when in full cry. Beautiful cover drive or lofty drive down the ground. That was one of his hallmark shots. But a 360 batsman always contributed for West Indies in the middle order during the ODI, his ODI career. I would rate him very highly. Average of 35, which is very good. But for his ability, I would have loved to see his average around 40 and more runs. But he did play a beautiful role as an all-rounder. Good catcher and always contributed with the ball. So he had a heavy load on him and a great expectation as a batsman. Carl Hooper, one of our finest ODI batsmen in West Indies cricket history. Yeah, man, he was obviously known for his all-around ability and effortless batting style, handy off-spin bowling. His ability to play long innings as well as provide explosive finishes made him a crucial player in the West Indies team. Known for those explosive finishes, which the team needed, so he played the role in the middle order, trying to solidify that order, provide strong finishes as a finisher, come in with the ball in the middle overs, bowl 10 over in ODI cricket, take wickets. He was everywhere, man, in cricket, at so many different roles, at so many various points in his career but again his batting quality above all else his slip fielding or his or his bowling his batting was just simply awe-spiring 
for a guy like me too because i grew up watching this guy bat and he was just sublime and effortless to watch so one of my favorite players carl hooper comes in at number five for us let's move on to number four mark we're getting into the top four man yes number four is the master blaster isaac vivian alexander richards from antigua 187 matches 167 innings innings 24 not outs 6721 runs best of 189 average of 47 Point zero zero eleven centuries, 45 half centuries. When it comes to stats, it really didn't matter to Rick with Richards. Richards just really concerned about entertaining and West Indies winning the match. I can remember the 1979 World Cup when he made a brilliant 138 not out at Lords to give West Indies a victory in 1979 World Cup. Another inning which goes under the radar was 1987 World Cup in Sri Lanka when West Indies was 52 for 4. Richards came in and blast 181 versus the Sri Lankans from 125 balls. Another great innings for Richards was in 1984 Texaco trophy in england when he made a brilliant 189 runs not out so we all know richards for his explosives innings and batting and match winning innings but Viv richards was just a devastating batsman the way he once he walks into the crease command that respect he right away he would basically fight fire with fire it doesn't matter if you were a good spinner or a good pace bowler Viv Richards would take you on. Hailed as the most destructive batsman in history of cricket. His fearless approach and just his ability to dominate the world's best bowlers at that top level. All great bowlers he's destroyed, man, in his time. Without a helmet, his batting, and with fearless approach to find era West Indies dominance. He was like the personified West Indies dominance at that time because with what the kind of team they had in the 70s and the 80s, he was just embodied everything about West Indies cricket at that time. In today's day and age, Mark, you know, that seems to be lacking a little bit. I think it's getting better over time, but we don't see that type of the same pride and the same type of the strength in today's West Indies cricket team. So there's been a downfall with that and we're going to try and talk about this particular topic in one of our next videos where we, we're going to discuss downfall of West Indies cricket from the 70s P to where we are currently. So we're going to try and highlight some things there for you guys in the next videos coming up. So Mark, you want to add anything else? Any kind of insights right now before we do that next video sometime? Viv Richard was a captain and lead by example. A hard taskmaster, serious cricketer. Whether you like his style, yes or no, but he always came out and lead from the front. Front. He set high standards, and that's one of the things with, with, with West Indies cricket now, because the high standards he set in, in the 80s and 90s, you know, it's hard to really keep up to that level, and the, the current players don't really have that kind of ability you know, and, and presence. So it's really hard to make a comparison, to be honest with you. We'll go through this analysis, do some research and see if we can figure out some exact points of why West Indies cricket is not able to match that same quality, you know, or compete at that top level, you know, because it's all about competition. So next video, guys, you know, let us know what you guys think of these thoughts. Thank you, man, uh, for that. And uh, Viv Richards at four, we've already told you guys. The top three, man, let's get into the top three. Number three, Mark, who are we going with on number three, man? Desmond Haynes, 238 ODIs, 237 innings, 28 not outs, best of 152 not out, average of 41.37, 8,648 runs. He made his debut 1978 versus Australia at the Antigua Recreation Ground and announced his presence with a magnificent superlative 148. It was shots galore against the Aussies. So right there, he, he made his mark in West Indies cricket. 17 centuries, 57 half centuries. If it's one person who knows how to score a one this century, it was Desmond Haynes. He played the ball all around the ground, a 360 batsman, but was severe and anything on the onside. Change his stand a little bit, open up his stand a bit. Haynes, one of the greatest batsmen in West Indies ODI cricket. I'm a big fan of Desmond Haynes. I rate him very highly. As a young boy, I, I saw him play West Indies versus England 1980 at Anisville, playing field. And he played a pull shot off Ian Burton that rocketed off the, the fence and came back halfway. And from since that time, I always say, as a batsman, as a youngster, always want to be like Desmond Haynes. Even so, if he has the, the goods, he's one of my favorite in West Indies cricket history. Test them with yeah. Desmond Haynes was known for formidable opening partnerships alongside, you know, Gordon Greenwich and his ability to construct innings and dominate bowlers made him a, one of the most reliable opening batsmen of his era you know and he amassed thousands of runs with the blend of technical skill and aggression so he knew how to construct an inning could apply patience and 
aggression at the same time, knew how to read the game, and one of the finest opening batsmen in these cricket ever produced. Mr. Dunhey, there for you guys. Number three. So number two, Mark, who are we going with that number two, man? I'm sure the viewers would love this pick. Yes, number two is a universe boss. The man from Jamaica, Chris Gale, left-handed batsman. Started in the middle for West Indies, but elevated to open batsman. 301 ODIs, 294 innings, 17 not out, 10,480 runs, best of 215, average of 37.83, 25 centuries, 54 half centuries. And to me, his best innings in the context of the game was 152 versus South Africa 2004. Chris Gale, explosive strike off the ball and a nonsense batsman. When he is in the mood for batting, there is nobody else more dangerous in this game than Chris Gale. Known for hitting massive sixes, hardly ever smile too much while he's batting. He concentrates very well. He knows his game. I respect Chris Gale very much. Wish he could have played a couple more matches for West Indies and get a better send-off and, and show a little bit more respect. But Chris Gale would go down to me as one of our greatest West Indies ODI batsmen of all times. One of the nicest and most humble guys off the field. I you know, absolutely love Chris Gale, man, and his ability to just connect with people from different cultures and his aggressive batting made him a legend in the game. In T20 ODI cricket, holds numerous oh. records. The time he held the record of the fastest ODI double century. I'm not sure if he still holds that record. More. Somebody may have broken that record, but at that time he held the fastest to score the double century. He may still hold that record. So one of the most explosive batsmen are my seeing somebody just come in and absolutely annihilate top-notch ball in the first 10 overs in the power play in, the, in any format. Just destructive, worth its weight, its gold for any team, West Indies cricket or league franchise cricket. He was a highly, highly paid player across the world. Chris Gale comes in at number two for us. And before we move on to number one, we asked you guys a question about, I'm going to pop it up on the screen, who was the first test captain to lead his country in 50 tests? The answer is Sir Clive Lloyd, who led the West Indies in 74 tests from 1974 to 1984 and was the first skipper to captain his country in 50 tests. I think next was Nawab Patodi who led India in 40 tests. I can actually go on with the list real quick right here. Imran Khan led Pakistan in 48 tests. Mike Atherton, uh, 54 tests. We're going to move on to number one. 291 ODIs, 289 innings, 32 not outs, 10,405 runs, best of 169 runs, average of 40.48, 19 centuries, 63 half centuries. Inning in Sharjah, that 169 was Bia Khan versus Sri Lanka. He hit the ball all parts of the field. That innings was a, a gem to watch. It was very destructive on the spin bowlers and explosive on the medium fast bowlers. This man is a legend. The man from the land of Sweet Woman and Calypso and Steel Bat, Brian Love. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel.